This is Enrique Williams on top of the ladder. He's a famous runologist from uh, from uh, from Scandinavia, and he's coming to take a look at the uh, at the rune stone here on the southwest pillar here at the tower. The ladder being held by Steve DeMarzo and, and uh, a couple of associates around working it up. But uh, this is a very exciting thing here. We could find out if this tower is Viking or not Viking in the next few minutes. So stay tuned. You can write 5.3 millimeters. Yep. And then is that 5.1 millimeter. 5.1? Yes. This is plastic by the way, so it's not gonna hurt. That's okay. Some. It took me a long time to find one this cheap. Because only the cheap ones are made of plastic. And then 3.9. 3.9. Are these the heights in centimeters? Yeah. Uh, 2.7. Yeah. Make sure you show them right. Is 2.7 a height or a width? No, it's a height. Okay. And then you can write width. Seven point six. Mm -hmm. These are centimeters, so I'll have to yep. transfer that into inches later. Um, the size of the stone itself. Seven centimeters wide, mm -hmm. and that's ten and a half inches. I have inches of it. And the nine point five. Was seven inches. I, oh, I can look here later on. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Um, the problem here is that these three lines that you see, this one, could be card. Yes. I'm not going to say that they are, but I'm not going to say that they're not. Are they? process that the stone has been you know while dragging it dragging on the ground or something yeah like because the, these things are parallel They're on parallel the, on the other hand none of the other stones have that so I would, I would say it's a 60 percent chance that it's actually carved by a person more than just dragging yeah. lines uh, what speaks against the runes is that these two start here and go up right yeah and this one sort of seems to start there and then goes way way down I mean it's almost twice as high as the others right and I've never seen that in any old early inscription they're all the same length height yeah uh, there has been a claim that there was this room in the middle that was, uh, to the right yeah I don't think that is a twig I just think that is a damage in the stone ah so but this one is reminiscent of an R I mean you see the this stroke here and yeah. then there's a sort of R-ish you mean the, like a, a, a Latin R or yeah, a the runic Latin R? Yeah, the Latin R and the runic R look very much alike. Oh, the similarity, okay. Since they were, the, the runes were actually based on the Latin alphabet. I see. Um, and this could be a rather unusual looking S. Uh, what would the first two lines be? Well, those would just be I's. You know, so it doesn't really, it's, it would say at the time, you know, I, I, or S. Errs. I don't think it's IRS. Is that the IRS? Yeah, it's, <laughs> That's the no, tax no, people. It's the tax oh, no. guys. <laughs> because you can use the I for E, so I IRS would be early IRS, right? Early IRS, yeah. Because yeah. they knew, of course, that they, they were doing this new no, no. <laughs> But that would be I I R S. Yeah. Um, I'm going to disappoint you. I would say this is not an intentional runic inscription. I'm not disappointed, trust no. me. Well, I, have, you know, I would be much happier if it were. 
whatever age it would have. I still like runes, you know. You do, it's yeah. You think it looks like scratch marks is what you're saying, Enric? Yes, it does. Yeah. And I cannot confirm the earlier reading of I M K, but this part of the stone has been damaged, and it is in a very, you know, you have a bad winters here. Yes. This thing will keep on being corroded here. The top edge is sloughing yes. off. And uh, it may be that there were stuff here before that I don't see now. So yeah. I'm going to it out. But the end row, no way, there's no end row here. Because this is undamaged. And I would have seen the traces of that twig that made it into an end. All right. The, the, uh, the rock that's just above it that your right hand is holding seems like it's the same type of rock. Yes. Do you think that might have had, and then part of the face of it is sloughed off? Yeah. Do you think that might have had lines on it? I mean, it or is it just... Like it. it almost looks like there was a coating on that rock and you're seeing underneath it. Is that, you know, what, what's that all about? It, is, it does look like a coating, but it looks natural to you, so I don't know what it is. It could be... It's just that those colors, those water. rocks are the same color, the two rocks there. Yeah, they have the same color, and this one may be flaking off a bit of strain, because this one is really, I've never seen something like that. Yeah. And I'm not a geologist. Right. And I have no idea. Does anyone know what kind of type of stone this is? I don't know, no. Scott Walker was here, right? He might know, did yeah. Did he climb up and look at it, or did he just... Did he climb up? I don't think he climbed up, yeah. no. No. There were earlier people that have been here like 20 years ago that, that, that came up with the whole Enrique thing. Yeah, he's a rock guy. He wouldn't might know. But uh, this is not a job for a guy with vertigo. But uh, <laughs> you're doing a great job there, Henry. Very difficult getting good pictures. So your conclusion is that this was uh, sort of maybe some kind of a natural made or human made accidental, but doesn't look like intentional ruins. I don't know what the stone, this stone looked like from the very beginning, but you know, sometimes masons make marks in stones because they want to have it in a certain place. Yes. That would make more sense to me. Like this is like three, you know, three yeah. lines. I mark it with a three because it goes on pillar number three or whatever. Right. On the other hand, you would expect a much bigger stone for that, right? Because yeah. this just yeah. sounds looks a bit. Perhaps this is part of something that was bigger and was built into the tower. Yeah. Or these are just made by someone who, you know, at the time it was still on the ground. I don't think anyone climbed up and made it here. Right. Oh, well, up there, then over, yeah, to that, yeah. that height. Although there's probably a scaffold to build all, yeah. all this. Although I have to say that, you know, when I'm looking at pictures, I was pretty, had my mind pretty set that these are just scratches. Yes. And, um, no, I'm not sure of that. You it's think they be man made? They might be man made, yeah. yeah. What I would say, man made. It, Possibly a man-made, certainly not runic, that's how I Certainly would. not runic, I see, yeah. And by runic you mean like early Scandinavian from the 1100s and that sort of thing? Yeah, or even later by someone who wanted to copy it. Oh, oh I see, yeah, I'll grab this. Yeah, right. Do you have any uh, thoughts on what you think this might be? You know what? I'm here in an official capacity. If I were a private person, I would have thoughts. But I'm a that's the only thing I know. If I say anything about it because I'm an amateur, you should not trust me if I say what I think, <laughs> one thing or another. But the problem is, if I say what I think, people are going to say, quote, Professor Williams says it's this or that. Yeah. I know, well, I know nothing about architecture. <laughs> it's like, well, did the, would the Vikings build anything like this? Would, never would, seen anything like that. And I'm worried about the plaster. I mean, they did they not didn't plaster, use plaster buildings. They did not make stone buildings at all like this. They would have wooden buildings covered with turf. But I'm not sure at this point claim that it's 11. No tell around the corner. I mean, that's what the story was for many years. But well, it, that much I know that, no, there's nothing like this. Right. Anything like this in Sweden? Anything nope. similar with eight columns?